Hey everybody, I'm Drew. And I'm Vince. And welcome to a brand new format for Do Play. I, we're running with the, the name Do Talks for now. <laughs> uh, we decided to start doing some uh, discussion type videos because we, we talk about this kind of stuff a lot just between ourselves and we thought that it would be really cool to get you guys, the viewers, involved in it a little bit. And with E3 right around the corner, uh, as of publication, tomorrow will be the first press conference for E3, uh, EA, and yeah. Um, okay, yeah, just EA tomorrow, and then Microsoft, Bethesda, and Devolver following on Sunday. So yeah, I guess to, to kick it off, um, there have been a lot of rumors around this year's E3 in terms of games that people expect to see um, on the show floor or revealed in the press conferences. So, and, you know, it's pretty much any other year leading yeah, up to E3. <laughs> so, so it's E3 as usual. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I guess the, the first one that I know is near and dear to both myself and Vince is Super Smash Brothers. Mm, Super there, Smash Brothers. <laughs> there have been a lot of rumors buzzing around as of late as to a port on the switch for uh smash brothers for wii u and smash brothers for 3ds some comp definitive edition if you will of the two yeah. of them all of their features the stages and everything some combination of those yeah. hell just the other day we had that that supposed leak of the um the updated paper mario stage from the 3ds version an updated smash run which turned out to be fake, um, yes. or at least I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they were confirmed definitively to be fake, though I don't remember what the source was for that, but we're, we're running with the fact that they're fake. Yeah, the, the only thing that lent any credence to that leak, in my opinion, was that redone Paper Mario stage. But, you know, anybody with a copy of Blender and a decent understanding of 3D modeling could put that together, reasonably yeah. speaking. Yeah, and and, I mean, the thing that sold me on it being fake was the fact that, like, the fonts for the words, for the character names Mario and Bowser Jr. were different than in the original game. Like, they just, they didn't match. And, right. Like, it could have been the case that Nintendo would need to change the font, but, like, that's, that's not, yeah. that's not a thing. <laughs> yes. So, like, the theoretically, um, if Nintendo were using a third-party font and they needed to pay for the license to that font, it is possible that they couldn't renew the license or that the license owner wanted to upcharge them unreasonably for continued use of the font. And Nintendo said, no, we'll just use a different font. But more than likely, with these kinds of things... The fonts are developed in-house, and they're all custom anyways. Yeah, So I would have to imagine that would be the case. Like, yeah, so that that is a very, very sl small chance of that e being, even being possible. Yeah. And the, I think the, the other thing was just that the, the screenshots were so inconsistent in quality between each other. Like, the yeah. Paper Mario one was really convincing. All of the others looked like quite honestly rush job photoshops like yeah there, i mean the there smash were... run ones were okay um the target test one with yoshi like that was literally just melee's target test like that one was not good yeah but if it had just been the one screenshot of the paper mario stage i think it would have been a much more convincing leak well i'm not i'm not actually sure that they were all by the same person I don't actually know. Like, I don't think the Yoshi story or the Yoshi's target test one was part of that same... Like, I think that was tacked on later. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the others. Well, that's fair. But, but in yeah. any case, um, I'm reasonably certain that that leak was fake. Yeah. Um, but that does not necessarily mean... That Smash for Switch. Yeah, there have been other quote-unquote leaks or sources that have said that a Smash port is on the way. Some of them supposedly from somewhat reputable sources, people who have leaked information in the past and had it be accurate. Um, obviously, all of these people are anonymous, so... Sure. I don't know. 
Yeah. But, I yeah. mean, for what it's worth, here's my two cents. I think Nintendo would be really, really, really stupid to not get a Smash port on the Switch as soon as possible. That being said, Nintendo has not always done the thing that I think they would be stupid not to do. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> I definitely think that they could print dollar bills by releasing yes. a Smash port around holiday 2017. Oh my, yes. I think that the, you know, the reason that Smash for Wii U didn't sell as well as previous Smash titles is simply because the Wii U attach rate was so much lower than all of their other consoles. Yeah. So like, the Switch Wii. is like already outpacing the Wii U. It's got a great attach rate. Uh, people are buying up Zelda. They're buying up Mario Kart. You know, we have proven that these Wii U ports do sell well. There are people who want them, people who missed out on the previous generation, and they want those games, those standout titles from the Wii U. Yeah. And I think that even if you didn't add characters, even if you didn't add stages, if it was just a port of the Wii U version alone, people would buy it and it would sell I would, really well. I would hands down buy it. Even, okay, so I'm, I'm an edge case because I'm like hardcore, huge Smash fan. Even if they literally just took the base Wii U version with no DLC, I would buy it, and I would buy the DLC again. <laughs> At least the characters and stages. Maybe not the meat costumes, but I would like I would do that because I want I want to play Smash on my Switch. Like sure. I want to be able to bring it into work and set it up with a couple controllers and go to town. Like that's amazing. Yeah, that I think capability. I think the. The big thing about the ports being successful is, like you were talking about, that huge selling factor of the Switch, the fact that you can undock it and take it with you to work or to school or to a friend's house or whatever, and you can bring these experiences that people haven't played before. Yeah. And so it's not just like an Xbox 360 to Xbox One HD remake. You know, we upscaled the graphics a little bit and hit that smooth button in Maya. And now <laughs> everything looks a little bit better. Yeah. It's like there there is that um, distinction that the Switch brings that I think lends a little bit more credence to the, the ports. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Like, And like with Mario Kart too, like... They added a decent amount of new content to the Mario Kart port. And not only that, but it was content that people had been clamoring for, that had, they had been complaining about with the original Mario Kart 8. People were like, the battle mode sucks, we hate this battle mode, everybody was hoping for it to be fixed in DLC, and it never was, but then they fixed it for the deluxe version. Yeah. And like, so it's, it's good content, it's quality content. Now granted, the Pokken port that was just announced the other day, you know, that doesn't look to be as enhanced a port, but it is still enhanced. There's characters that were not on the Wii U version that were in the arcade version, and there's an entirely new character that wasn't in either version. Mm -hmm. And I think a couple of new support Pokemon. I'm not... I don't really play Pokken, so I'm not, like... Yeah, I'm not that. super up on that one, but... But, uh, again, you know, I might it check it out. just a straight port. They did... They added characters. Right. You know. So... So, uh, so in, in the interest of um, having this not be entirely <laughs> about Smash, I guess, final thoughts on this one. We, we are both of the opinion that Nintendo has a golden opportunity to make a sweet dime here by releasing a Smash port, and I think... That if it's going to happen, it's going to happen now. I definitely case. agree with that. If they, if it doesn't happen at E3, it's not happening, period. And there, there's I, a couple trade shows coming up that Nintendo might announce it around. Yeah, but I think 2017 I is our window. Has there release. Have they ever announced a Smash game at something other than E3? I'm honestly not sure. I really don't think they have. That's um, fair. Yeah. So I I would say, personally, I would give it about maybe a 40% chance of being at E3 this year. That might be yeah. a little on the high end. 
Yeah, I'm I'm inclined to give it lower. If they if they hadn't announced Pokken, I would be more inclined to believe it. But that that me think about what that means. A, there are now if they did have a Smash port, there would be three Wii U ports in the first year of the system, at least announced in the first year of the system. And there would also be three major fighting games on the switch in the first like they would have arms they have pokin and they'd have smash and those two factors combined i think i think it's just a no-go yeah and it's very unfortunate it does kind of cannibalize their own market exactly yeah um but at at the same time i wouldn't be completely surprised to see i would not be surprised at all to see it yeah, so which which is why I'm sitting around like maybe 30-40% chance of it showing up cuz like I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if it actually happened, right. but I'm not expecting it to happen. Yeah. So it's definitely under the 50% threshold. Yeah. I I'd give it maybe 25% chance myself. Yeah. Um okay. So moving on, um one of the next big ticket items here is the the open world Star Wars game from EA that has been sort of kind of floating around in the ether for the past several years. Yeah, so there was a, a concept trailer for uh, Visceral's Star Wars game at E3 2016. And EA is a company that is known for having pretty quick development cycles. Like, they get a Battlefield game out every year. Yeah, for the past couple years. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, Star Wars Battlefront was released about a year ago, and now Battlefront 2 is coming out soon. So, they definitely have the Frostbite engine. I wouldn't be at all surprised if it used that. So... I'm thinking that we can expect to see another, maybe a gameplay trailer this time. I wouldn't expect a release for at least another year or two, but I don't think that um, getting more news on it. We have have we seen anything of it since then? Not that I know of. Yeah, so I think I agree that a release would probably be a bit much to hope for, but for sure. But I, I, I definitely think that the any some sort of trailer or just a little bit more information, maybe uh, I, don't, I don't think it's even too early for a release window at this point. Yeah. There's no reason for them to commit to something this far out. Yeah. But, but uh, that would like, sure be cool. It, it would be pretty cool. <laughs> it's definitely a game that I've had my eye on in what capacity that you can with the drought of news on it but an open world star wars game sounds pretty awesome regardless of what time period or era like old republic um original trilogy time period like any it's all star wars it's all awesome (laughs) i feel like you could tell really cool stories in this really cool world and with disney (laughs) now owning star (laughs) wars and having a movie out every year as well like, I definitely think that EA is going to want to keep churning out these Star Wars games as quickly as humanly possible. Oh, yeah. And get and keep it in the forefront of everyone's minds. Yeah. So even if they don't have anything exciting to show, I think there's a good possibility that it's going to be there. Because they want people thinking about Star Wars all the time. Yeah, definitely. And the... Speaking of uh, space themed stuff uh one of the big leaks quote unquote rumors that just happened the other day was for the elder scrolls starfield and now oh uh, yeah i actually hadn't heard about this one (laughs) yeah um if you pull up the the google doc i've got a screenshot of it there a screenshot of the the leak so the story is that somebody was working on setting up the la convention center for E3, uh, they were walking around the halls and they saw this banner that had been put up for the Elder Scrolls Starfield. And I'll have a, a picture, I'll have the picture up in the YouTube video. 
And uh, it seems like, if this is accurate, that The Elder Scrolls is going to be going in a sci-fi direction for their next title. Oh, that's interesting. It's it's interesting, but I don't know how much I really believe the leak. Now, granted, if this is photoshopped, it's very well done because it really looks like a blurry, you know, cell phone took a quick picture thing. To um, be fair, though, it's really easy to fake that. Cause it you is. You could just, like, make it sharp yeah. and crisp and then blur it. <laughs> right. You can add a blur filter to stuff. Like, yeah. uh, it's, def- it's definitely not impossible to Photoshop, but, like, you know, the the color temperature of everything matches very well. And, yeah. Like, if, if it is a Photoshop, it's a very well-done Photoshop. But in yeah, this but day I mean, and these age... these days, anything's possible. Yeah, in this day and age, you can't rule it out. Yeah. Um, and just thinking about it from uh, Bethesda and Zenimax's standpoint, like, to be perfectly honest, they're very predictable companies. Like, there's, like, every other year, it's like, there's an Elder Scrolls major release, and then there's a Fallout release, like, two years after that, and they're just on this alternating schedule, and they're in this rhythm, and they haven't really done much new or exciting i guess they have the the dishonored franchise now as well but even then that's kind of just like fallen into the steps of like every four years ago years or so we get a new dishonored game yeah and it's very unlike bethesda to take an existing franchise in such a different direction as opposed to just making a new franchise and the the elder scrolls for the record the elder scrolls starfield was trademarked by bethesda a while ago um and you know they have said that there's a number of different projects that they're working on yada yada it was a very blanket um pr statement about the whole thing very non-committal sure sure um and i think i don't think that Bethesda would take an established franchise like the Elder Scrolls and take it in such a different direction. I think that sci- like sci-fi and fantasy, like there there is some overlap there and certainly like we're all nerds here. <laughs> there's a lot of overlap in people who like sci-fi and people who like fantasy. It's true. But like in terms of thinking of it as a business and building your brand, it really doesn't make sense to take it in such a different direction because you can't really have like, well, I mean, you can have like the established locations and the races and everything, but then it's just like, it becomes elder scrolls in space. Yeah. And it just kind of seems like you're shoehorning this established mythos and this world that you've spent decades building at this point into a different setting I and mean, it's not definitely not impossible, and it would be yeah. pretty interesting to see it done well. But I would definitely be interested to see how they did it. Like that, that could be like an op- like a huge open world game like that, like actually in space and on different planets and stuff. That was actually done well would be awesome. But yeah, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying, and I I am inclined to agree that it. It would be an odd decision, to be sure. And the other thing that, like, looking at the picture, like, there's not a whole lot to it. Like, it's just, it's this one, like, generic space dude with a gun behind, or in front of, like, the Earth. Like, it's very... And some stars. And some, yeah, and some stars. Like, it's, it's kind yeah. of uninspired. Yeah, it's... it. It's kind of generic. It's a little underwhelming. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, it definitely banks on the the shock factor of seeing the Elder Scrolls logo next to, like, a space marine. Yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know. I I can see this one going either way. Yeah. I don't, I don't have enough information to really be, like, definitively yeah. one way or the other. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would give it, like, a 50-50 shot. Yeah. Like, like I said, it it would be surprising for me to see Bethesda take an IP in such a different direction. 
but you know given the evidence that the name was trademarked a while ago that does help they, it a lot yeah and like, the the fact that the you know the image looks authentic yeah i wouldn't be super surprised to see them announce something i would find it funny if like they did actually have the elder scrolls starfield at e3 but it was actually something completely different like it wasn't elder scrolls in space it was like some mythos with like the stars using magic or something like on earth like it right, was just right. something different like yeah that, that that was my thought as well like this almost looks like something that someone put together based off the name starfield right and their assumptions on what that would be i would yeah. not be at all surprised to see them announce elder scrolls starfield because it's been i guess six years at this point since skyrim came out so yeah. like elder scrolls 6 it's gonna happen they're Bethesda, they're gonna make a new Elder Scrolls game. That's not surprising. Yeah. But I don't think that it will be a sci-fi game. Yeah, well, I guess. When is Bethesda's conference? Bethesda's conference is uh, Sunday at 9 p.m. Pacific time. Oh, so that's at like midnight Eastern time. Huh? Yeah, that's like midnight Eastern time. Yowch. All yeah, right, well, I Sunday guess. Night. Oh. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Technically on Monday. <laughs> yeah, I'll find out when I wake up on Monday morning. <laughs> I'm not staying up for that on a work night. <laughs> Anyways, anyway, moving right along here. Uh, one of the other highly anticipated, well, highly anticipated, one of the rumored games that people think is going to be, at least make some sort of presence at E3, is Beyond Good and Evil 2. And this, uh, some of the reasoning that I read behind this is that uh, with The Last Guardian actually having been released, gotten out of dev hell, uh, the next like big ticket item on Sony's to-do list in, in that category of things is Beyond Good and Evil 2, which has kind of been in dev hell for a long time now. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think anybody's expecting to see a trailer or gameplay or anything, just like a quick acknowledgement that they're still working on it, that they are planning to release it, that it's not canceled. Because I don't think it ever was like officially canceled. Pe- it just petered out. And yeah, I don't think so either. It. I could be wrong, but... But I, yeah, so again... I wouldn't be surprised, and I would be surprised if there were a trailer or a gameplay or anything more. But I wouldn't be at all surprised for Sony to just keep dangling that carrot. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm pretty much on the same page as you on this one. Yeah, I'm, unfortunately, I don't really have a whole lot more to to talk about on that one. That's just my gut. I don't really have any other evidence to back that one up. <laughs> um now the next one which is pretty interesting is uh Crystal Dynamics the the developers for uh the Tomb Raider reboot franchise. I'm pretty sure have officially been moved onto a a Marvel project for an Avengers game. I believe so, that, yeah, because Square Enix put out, a tr- like, a teaser for it a few mm-hmm. months ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. So people are thinking, you know, we just got this teaser, uh, maybe there'll be something at E3. I'm not, I'm not convinced. Yeah. I, I think we're I... still, like, a good three or four years away from release. Yeah, I mean, bear in mind, this is Square Enix we're talking about. Like, <laughs> they take forever to do anything. That's true. Well, like, on, on, on that note, though, Crystal Dynamics as a developer have been very solid. Like, well, all right, that's fair. Let me let me look up some numbers. But the re- I don't think the release between uh, Tomb Raider and um, Rise of the Tomb Raider was... Yeah, so Tomb Raider came out in 2013... Okay. And then um, <clears throat> Rise of the Tomb Raider. That came out in 2015. All right. I mean, that's a reasonable turnaround. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, th- those guys, A+, they're solid developers. They know what they're doing. So I feel like, you know, they'll be able to 
to get something done and showable in a very quick time frame. But a couple months after initial teaser trailer, I think that's cutting it too close. Yeah. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Just be like, especially with like, like Crystal Dynamics is with like with everything that Square Enix has on their plate. Like they've got they've got the Final Fantasy VII remake. They've got Kingdom Hearts three. Like they've got a lot of big games coming up. And I just I think it's too soon to be seeing anything substantial for this Avengers game. Yeah, I agreed. Yeah. Um, and then the the last of the the big ticket items here that I wanted to cover specifically is uh, Halo Six. People are saying that um, Halo Six is in development, that it currently runs on Windows Ten, which it freaking better <laughs> because it certainly isn't gonna run on Windows Vista. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Does anything really run on Windows Vista? Oh. Does Windows Vista even run on Windows Vista? Um, judges? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, it was... So between Halo 4 and Halo 5, there's a three-year gap. Halo 5 came out in 2015. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, again, Halo is one of those franchises that apparently will never die <laughs> as long as people keep buying it they'll keep making them yeah. and it's been two years since the last release so sure they're gonna want to get people excited about the next one it'll probably come out year or two yeah i can yeah. see that it, it seems... just it makes good business sense yeah it seems like a pretty safe bet yeah exactly i doubt it'll be anything earth shattering but nothing Probably since, not. like, the first Halo really has been. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to click that subscribe button to stay current on all things Duplay. If you really like us, why not support us on GameWisp? We've got lots of awesome rewards for our subscribers, including early access to our videos and exclusive content. Thanks. Catch you guys next time.